Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Southrow. If you haven't seen the show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell up the street in Westboro. Uh, I, because we're a large multi-specialty firm, there are 70 of us, so I do nothing but elder law. That's what I like to do. But this show is not about elder law. It is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations uh, at, the, at the Senior Center or on Zoom these last couple of years, since we've been doing them um, all on Zoom, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's you, and then you meet, that means you want to stay right in South Row. You don't want to leave, you know? And so the question is, who are the people you want to know? And what are the programs you want to know about? Um, so to help you do exactly that, stay in your house for as long as you want to stay in your house. So with me is my wonderful co-host, Doug Peck, a South Row resident for many, many years who also his day job is working with seniors all the time too, through an organization called Seniors Helping Seniors. But once again, this isn't about his day job. This is really about Frank and Mary and his, what he's been able to do is really find folks that, that we, we, we feel are direct, who's, who have a direct relevance to what is going on in South Road. And I think we've seen this guest before. Uh, Doug, whom do we have today? Ah, uh, we have a, a return guest. I don't know if people have seen her before or not, Sherry Keating. Uh, she had done a program previously for us on pre-diabetes. And my goal is to make sure that people stay healthy as long as they want in their home. And that's why I chose Sherry. There's so much new information about the things that you can do uh, to make your uh, to make it healthier for you and the and the people that that are in your household, uh, it's there's a lot of things that are in your control that uh, you should really know about, take advantage of. So Sherry's going to talk about some of those things today about how food and how some lifestyle changes can really make a big difference uh, in uh, in in how you how you live your life in Southboro or wherever. And, and so, Doug, you mean that the that that the meal that my mother always made for me, the steak on one side and the potatoes and the kind of overly <laughs> boiled green beans, right? Yeah. And the and then the pie at the end. That wasn't necessarily what the what the ideal, but I guess it, we're going to find out. Maybe it's it, true. It, maybe right. maybe it, right? it wasn't the it wasn't the best choice for every night of the week, right? right. So, right. <laughs> that's well, what so, we're talk so, about. so do you Here's remember? Go ahead. Remember from you know watching what what was what was the 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 Woody Allen movie where where he wakes up in the future, yeah. and 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 in the yes. future you know the ideal food is like banana cream pies and stuff. Right. He was so excited about it. It's so maybe that's that. what's happened. Maybe, maybe that's now the healthy food. So it's Sherry, thank you so much for coming on. We really, we really appreciate. it. You guys are too funny. I love this. <laughs> and I would choose coconut cream in the future versus banana cream. <laughs> <laughs> but I love what you said, Doug, about not every day, because that's really the bottom line when you're talking about food and health is it's, you know, you can have those special treats. It's just not an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for having me. First of all, I love being back. You guys are great. Uh -huh. And I love what you're doing. So, um, so thank you so much today. I really want to talk about, so my passion is to help people pre prevent and manage type two diabetes and type two diabetes affects every system of the body as we've talked about in the past. So I want to talk about how, um, the brain is affected um, and what we can do, it's January. Everyone's making New Year's resolutions and it's a great time to talk about maybe making some simple changes in what we're eating and how we're moving our body to improve our health for whatever age we are, wherever we live, suffer or not, mm -hmm. and to help our body and our brain. Uh, so how does that sound? That sounds good. Awesome. So we know that the brain is the third largest organ and it's very complex. And we know that the brain uh, controls our body's movement. And if our brain isn't fueled with high quality fuel, think about your car. If you're putting in not the right gas in your car, your car is not going to function optimally. Well, your brain has to be fueled with the most optimal nutrients for it to 
be at peak performance as well. So lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. I know everybody's heard that before, <laughs> but you know what? It really is critical to how our longevity in our life and our quality of life. And everyone wants to live a long, healthy and happy life, right? You guys mm -hmm. do. I do, right? So we have to make sure we're fueling our body and our brain with optimal nutrition. And we have to be thinking about how we're living our lives in terms of our habits. So your habits, lifestyle habits can slow your brain aging or can accelerate your brain aging. So if you are actually living a healthy lifestyle, you're getting enough sleep, you're exercising, you're eating right, you're, socializ you're socializing, whether it's on Zoom today, because that's <laughs> a lot of times what we're doing is socializing on Zoom or on the telephone versus in person. If, you know, those things um, and keeping our weight down, um, obesity can actually accelerate brain aging by 10 years. Wow. And obesity leads to a lot of chronic disease. So we need to be, you know, making sure that when we're putting food in our mouth and, and looking at our plates, that we're putting the right food choices on there. We're making mm -hmm. sure that we're moving our body. So it's not just exercise. If we're sitting for prolonged periods of time, the new study out there says that if you sit for eight hours and don't get up, and I, you know, it's easy to do when you're a business owner or you're, mm -hmm. you know, on the computer socializing or in groups or on Zoom all day, you have the same risk of dying as if you were a smoker. Mm -hmm. So if we are not moving our body and just sitting either whether we're watching TV, we're on the computer, we're on a, you know, a game, whatever it is, if we are sedentary and not moving our body for eight hours, we have the same risk of dying as smoking. So what they say is every hour, we need to get up and move our body for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you do. You got to get that blood flowing. There's a lot of things going on in the body that will happen in a negative way if we don't get up. So the first thing I want to take away when we're talking about lifestyle and brain health and physical health is that we need to move our bodies five minutes every hour. We also want to exercise. And we want to be exercising five days a week for 30 minutes or 10 minute increments three times a day. It's a moderate pace. I know it's cold. The weather hasn't been very good, but we have a house that we live in or an apartment wherever we are, a, a senior community, wherever we are, we can get up and walk around. Mm -hmm. And as long as we're moving our body at a moderate pace, then we're going to get the health benefits. Sleep. And, and, and so it doesn't have to be those 30 minutes don't have to be all together. You can actually do those 30 minutes in, in literally in 10 minute chunks. That's, that's amazing that, it, that, that, that small a change. And, and for folks who are living in like assisted livings and stuff, that's ideal just because it's all indoors, you know, so that there's exactly. probably room right inside to move, right? And for our house where, where our bedroom is on the third floor and it's an old Victorian, you know, that's, that's, that's 30 steps up and 30 steps down. So it's, it's mm -hmm. easy to get, <laughs> the it really is. And I like that you say that because it really isn't as hard as people think, right? It's really doable for everyone. And, and that's the goal is it has to be doable or people aren't going to do it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sleep. There's so many studies now on sleep. We need to get seven to eight hours of sleep a night. It really makes a huge difference in our emotional health, our physical health, and our brain health. We need, we're meant to be social beings. We need to try to be as social as possible. Even during this difficult time, we want to be safe, but there's a lot of outlets to be social. So we want to make sure that we're getting our socialization in. Um, food. I want to talk a little bit about food because we know that what we eat, we are what we eat, right? Mm -hmm. And I love the saying, food can either be the slowest form of poison or the <clears throat> best medicine. And so we want to make sure that we're fueling our body with the best food. So nutrient dense food, which means that it's filled with vitamins and minerals. It includes all of the food groups. We don't want to leave out any of the food groups, but it's our choices and how much we take that's going to make a difference in our brain and our physical health. So there's been many studies out there that say that there's a powerful connection between brain aging, right? physical health and our risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease by the food that we eat. 
there's actually a study out of the universe at Rush University in Chicago, Dr. Martha Claire Morris. And what she found was uh, she's done multiple studies and there's a there's three actual healthy, I'm not gonna call them diets because diet is a very negative term. I'm gonna call them healthy eating styles or patterns that are great to protect our brain. There's the Mediterranean diet, which everyone knows it's very high in olive oil and nuts and whole grains and seafood. And then we have the DASH diet, which the DASH diet stands for dietary approaches to stop high blood pressure. So in, when people have high blood pressure, or their blood pressure is a little too high, the doctor says you should go on the DASH diet. And it's very similar to the Mediterranean, only they emphasize sodium because high sodium can lead to high blood pressure and really tax our kidneys. So those two are very brain protective. They slow brain aging and they lower your risk of dementia and cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. Then there's the MIND diet, which seems to be superior to the DASH and Mediterranean diet. What they found is that they selected specific foods. There's 10 brain healthy foods and there's five not so brain healthy foods. And in certain portions, eat in certain amounts during the week. So sometimes you need them daily, sometimes you need them so many times a week. They have found that these 10 healthy foods in these five potentially harmful foods actually can slow brain aging, can reverse your brain age by seven and a half years. Wow. So let's talk about the 10 healthy brain foods in the MIND diet. Leafy greens, you should have those Excuse almost me. every day. Did you, yes. the, did you say the Mayan? I keep thinking of the Mayan diet, like the no. people in Central America. No, MIND, MIND the diet. diet. I get it. I, so, thank, so it thank. stands for Mediterranean. Okay, let's see if I get this right. Um, <laughs> it is a it's a hybrid diet that actually takes some of the foods from the Mediterranean diet and some of the foods from the Dash diet, and it puts it into a in into the Mind diet. Which okay, let's see if I can. I never can remember. Oh, Mediterranean Dash intervention for neurodegenerative delay that's a mouthful wow. so the mind diet aren't you glad I'll you just call it the first? mind diet <laughs> so really it's a hybrid diet that's really taken those healthy foods from the mediterranean and the dash diet and has really come up with a brain specific diet that has been found to prevent alzheimer's disease and wow. so if we consume these foods the more we consume them at the recommended number of servings per week, the greater impact and benefit to our brain. And remember, what's good for our body is good for our brain. What's good for our brain is good for our body. So the foods that we wanna make sure that we're including are green leafy vegetables. We wanna have those every day. So like spinach and kale and just incorporating them. You can incorporate them in every meal, snacks. Other vegetables you wanna have once a day, <clears throat> at least once a day, a serving a day. Beans and legumes, you wanna have four servings a week. Nuts, five days out of the week, you wanna have an ounce of nuts. Berries, you wanna have two servings a week. Whole grains, every meal. You wanna have fish, three servings a week. Fish is great for brain development, eye development, for your heart. Poultry without the skin, because the skin is where all the fat is. So you want to have a couple servings of poultry a week. You want to have olive oil every day. Think about the Mediterranean diet. They eat a lot of olive oil. So that should be your preferred source of oil. And a glass of red wine a day, five ounces. So these are the brain healthy foods, okay? Now, if you don't drink, don't start. But if you do drink, <laughs> change your alcohol consumption to a glass of red wine. Um, so these are the reason these foods are chosen and for the amount that they're chosen for is because they found that if they ate these foods, the people in the mind diet study, the more they ate these foods, the lower risk of Alzheimer's. So if you were, if you really adhered to this and the amount of times a week, you're supposed to eat these 10 healthy foods, you can lower your risk of Alzheimer's and dementia by over half. Wow. Even and even if you didn't 
adhere to these every single day, you could lower your risk by 35%. So by a third of getting mm -hmm. Alzheimer's and everyone's concerned about that, right? It's become very prevalent. We used to be more concerned about cancer and heart disease, but now everyone's concerned about brain health and Alzheimer's risk, right? So the more you incorporate these foods into your diet, the better health that your brain and body are going to have. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. That's great to realize, and I think it's it's also great for fo folks, you know. So I, but Doug and I both deal with seniors, primarily mm -hmm. with seniors, and you know we know from kind of anecdotally, you always say to yourself, well, you know, you know, my mother had it, my aunt had it, my dad had it. Oh, geez, I'm going to get it, you know, and you assume that that is all about just the genetics of it. And I know that mm -hmm. certainly there, are, there, you know, you, you read some of the data and, the, and there are, I think there have been, a, a, there has been a lot of suggestion that there, that there are you know, plaques and tangles, the famous plaques and tangles that tend to be, cause Alzheimer's tend to be, you know, prevalent in certain folks. But I think that it, it, what, you're, what you're suggesting is that there really has not been a sufficient emphasis therefore on lifestyle and on saying to yourself, well, you know, maybe the reason why my and dad got dementia was that they were eating bad, you know, as yeah. opposed to there was a gene, right. you know, that, 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 that and, and to acknowledge that the, that the, our, we, that we've improved, that we've really learned over time about these aspects. I mean, you, you, your genetics are your genetics, you know, and I'm, I don't, I don't want to get cloned into something else, you know, but, but, but to adapt to that by really with, with, by changing that kind of lifestyle stuff. Just, it's a wonderful, it's wonderful. It feels very empowering. What you're saying just feels very empowering. And you yeah. actually can take back the control because we do have control over what choices that we make. And it's interesting. I just did a class on, a motivational class on changing your thinking to change your behavior, to live a healthier life. So if you think differently, you act differently. So it's kind of, you have to shift your mindset to that an empowering one. I love the fact that you use that word because we do have the power, we do have the control. And maybe we, we don't eat so good this morning, but guess what? Every meal is a new opportunity to make <laughs> a better choice. Yeah. Every day is a new opportunity to make better choices. So I love the fact that you emphasize the fact that we have control and that we need to take that control and we do have that responsibility. If we want to be healthy, we need to take charge of our choices. Mm -hmm. And so lifestyle is key to so many health issues and we do have control over that. So I appreciate yeah. that you said that, Arthur, and I do agree 100% with that. Um, can, I, can, can I just ask one more? And I'm sorry, I'm Doug, but this is, this is obviously we're really interested. Yeah. <laughs> really interested Doug. So when you're talking about those foods that kind of make your day, you know, are these all and versus or choices? Like if you have all those things, but you still have other stuff that may be less, may be less healthful, right? Are we, are, are, is that still fine? Or, or are you saying you really need to replace the other yeah. stuff with, these, with, 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 with the foods that you're talking about? So that's a great question. The, the thing about the mind diet, it's very forgiving. And so this is encouraging people to make these choices and incorporate them. Um, the things that, so those are the things we want to include. So let's talk about those things that we want to limit because there are right. five foods that could potentially damaging to your brain and your body health. Of course, saturated fats are our bad fat. They come from animal products and from our tropical oils like coconut oil and uh, palm kernel oil, those kind of things. So the things that we want to limit are red meat. So the thing I love about the Mind Diet, it's not like an all or nothing. It tells you these are the things you want to limit and these are the things you want to try to get more of. So red meat, we can still have red meat, but we want to have less than four servings a week. And a serving is about three ounces. So think about a deck of playing cards, okay? So it's not saying cut it out, but when you choose red meat, you want to choose the leanest, options, cut off all the excess fat, and how you cook it also makes a difference too. Butter and stick margarine. We want to go more towards the olive oil and the liquids versus the butter and stick margarine, and shortening is definitely out. Those are very high in saturated fat. So um, cheese, oh, you're not going to like this at all. 
cheese is very high in fat and it's not the healthy fat. They, on this diet, they want you to limit it to one serving a week of the whole fat cheese. So you can have cheese, but you want to choose the lower fat cheeses. Those are like feta is one of the lower fat choices. Um, so feta would be a good choice, but you want to stick to an ounce. So, and uh, you want to stick to a lower fat version. Pastries and sweets, we all know that they're not healthy for us. Any of that type of food isn't sugar, is not, our body doesn't need it. It's not good for us, but it doesn't limit it. It says you can have less than five servings a week. That seems like a lot to me, but I think that you need to think about your choices. Um, and, subs and there's a lot of healthy substitutions that you can put in and make at home to make something healthier for you. Fast and, and fried. And oh. Connected with that is the serving. It's always the serving size, right? Always the, the question serving is, size. at that size, how many servings do you get in one pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream? Like, <laughs> like a, t a jillion, you know, you get, right? But so with serving size. You know, Whoa. portion control is huge. Absolutely. So when I give these servings, I'm talking about portion control as well. So you know what? If you set up your plate for success, you can indulge, but smaller, smaller pieces. So you really want to think about, you know, if you really want that piece of banana cream pie, Arthur, what else are you putting on your plate? You want to start with the healthy things first and then you indulge with a small piece. Because if you're not having and enjoying life and having the things that you like, not every day, then what's the sense, right? We all yeah. like to eat. Everything is centered around food, right? So we really want to make sure that we're getting to enjoy it, but we want to make sure we're getting the healthy foods first and then mm -hmm. indulging in a smaller mm -hmm. piece. And the last mm -hmm. thing of the foods that you want to limit is fried and fast food. So that's really our downfall in our society is that we are a society that lives on the run. We eat a lot of fast and fried foods. They recommend less than one serving a week of fried mm -hmm. or fast food. And I'm sure that a lot, it's easy, right? But there's other healthy choices. You can look at a menu before you go to a restaurant. You can look at the menu and you can pick healthier options so you know which restaurants are good. When you go to a restaurant, ask for olive oil for dipping in, in your bread instead of butter. Put gravy on the side. Ask for um, olive oil and um, vinegar. There's a lot of ways. Take half of the food they give you and put it in a box before you even start eating because you're going to eat all that food, right? There's a lot of ways that you can really incorporate this in a very practical way. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about this whole thing is that you're not eliminating things. You're not, you know, you're not, you don't feel like you're, uh, you're, you're missing out on something. It's just a smaller and you add other things in that you know are going to be better for you. So there's a lot of flexibility and people just need to uh, experiment a little bit with it. And so eat, I mean, it's not hard to eat a, a you know, an ounce of nuts. I, you know, I buy a, a big uh, container now of BG that just came back and they, they have walnuts in them and cashews and almonds. And to eat those, you know, just have a little handful of those once or twice a day, even it fills you up and they're really pretty tasty, you know? So, I mean, it's not, it's not super hard. It's just the little changes over time can have big results. I love that you say that because my company's motto is small steps, significant health rewards. Yeah. And um, I actually want to read a quote if I can find it in front of me. I always I want to make sure I get it right. I want to read this quote <laughs> to you. And this quote um, is one of my favorite quotes. I'm going to just see if I can find it very quickly. Um, so while that, she's looking, I just want to tell you one thing. She, we're going to have her contact information at the end of this. Yeah. So you can, you know, you can email her. You can, you can get on her mailing list for other. She does a lot of good Zoom presentations that you may want to attend. So, you know, but all that contact information will be at the end. Yes. And, I as, found and as you can see, she is inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are, I love coming on your show. You guys are always so sweet. So here's one of my favorite quotes, and I think it applies to what you had said, Doug. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. 
The Secret of Your Success is Found in Your Daily Routine, and that's by John Maxwell. So I really think it's those little changes mm -hmm. that we make. So think about if you're making eggs, throw in a little spinach in it, right? Mm -hmm. Have a little less cheese, throw in some lentils um, or some beans, um, throw in some of other vegetables, make a veggie omelet instead of a meat omelet. Um, you know, there's a lot of, when you're making a salad, throw in, sprinkle some nuts in there or some sunflower yeah. seeds, change the dressing that you use. It's very simple to make small changes, but we, you're never too old to yeah. begin, right? It's never yeah. too late to begin or too early to begin. So it doesn't matter what age you are. You can make changes. We are humans. We can adapt. And mm -hmm. so, and you know what, your lifelong health will definitely benefit. Mm -hmm. And at the end of those great meals, you're also going to feel a lot more like getting up and walking as opposed right, to just yeah. kind of sitting, <laughs> yeah. sitting in your chair and just say, oh, I'm so right. full, you know? Right. So, so it, it's like, it, it kind of, not to use the pun, but it feeds on itself. It feeds yes. on itself. <laughs> so, or Sherry, that was just great. Doug, every, you know, you've, you've done this for three years now. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. getting these wonderful guests and we even get these great repeats, the people that are really inspirational so yeah. sherry thank you so much doug thank you so much for doing this folks you are, look at the contact information as sherry says this is a matter of a lot of little stuff it's january not a bad time to be kind of thinking about mm -hmm. this stuff right just to think right. about it and to do things in a little increments and just think december's around the corner you'll be able to celebrate so yep. thank you very much sherry thank you doug and folks we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of frank and mary here in southborough thank you very thanks, much thanks everybody Thank Bye. you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Have a great Bye, day. Bye, Sherry. Bye, Thank guys. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.